Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, we we're just waiting for um, the, the last few um, participants to, to join there. So we've got um, a few registered today um, for today's session. But just to, to let you all know that today's session is being recorded. So if there's anybody that has registered and um, hasn't been able to make it, for whatever reason, that they will still get a copy of the slide deck and the, the video in the post session comes. So just to, to let everybody know there. So welcome to our uh, Compass Plus Bite Size webinar on FSQ analysis and reporting. My name is Peter McKinney. I'm a Compass Plus uh, consultant trainer and I lead on our virtual delivery program. I also um, assist with the face-to-face -face delivery. Joining me today, I've got Cameron, Tamad even, sorry, beg your pardon, Tamad. Uh, Tamad joining me, uh, who is the customer service advisor. Tamad, would you like to jump on and say hello? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tamid, and um, I'm here today to assist Peter with the uh, webinar session. If you guys have any questions, please do leave it down in the Q&A, and I'd be happy to help. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Tamid. So, yeah, just to um, reiterate there, if there are any questions as I'm going through the, the slide deck or the demo uh, that you need answering, please drop them in the Q&A or the, the group chat, and Tamid will work his way through them uh, to assist you. So just some learning uh, objectives for what we want you to be able to take away from the next uh, 30 minutes or so. So understanding the benefits of using the FSQ reporting feature, for, uh, re reporting feature, sorry. So the, the new custom reporting function, really, really powerful tool. And it allows you to really dig, dig down deep into that granular uh, data to be able to then uh, provide that support for your learners um, based on the information that you're you're getting back from that. Learn how to analyze the data effectively, selecting specific criteria. So you're really meeting those uh, individual learner needs based off the uh, the data report and function within FSQ. Identify how the responses can uh, track progress for individual learners and how then careers activities are having an impact on careers learning. So again, very much that identifying those learners that are saying they've got little or no knowledge in particular areas and then starting to create uh, custom groups and activities to help address those needs. Uh, um, understanding and identifying individual learners who may require more targeted support, again, through all of the different reporting functions uh, that Compass Plus uh, gives you to then really drill down to that granular level learner detail. And then lastly, to access the, the further training. So with all of our uh, online and face-to-face -face sessions, we always go through uh, where you can get that support and guidance from, and we'll leave time at the end of today's session to do that as well. Okay, so I'm just going to um, turn my camera off so I can then see the, the screen better. So for anybody that's new to using uh, FSQ um, that is on the, the session today, just to kind of go back over really what it is in terms of um, a, a product within Compass Plus. So it's a reporting tool that allows you to assess the, uh, the, the learner's perception of their career's provision within your particular setting. So it allows you to ask a range of questions and then from that, drill down into the specifics um, and looking at specific criteria um, in terms of how learners are answering things positively or negatively, and then also within particular characteristics as well. So you can then filter onto boys, onto girls, um, different uh, learners that are uh, FSM. So that type of thing. So the, the ability to be able to really analyze data at a very, very individual level to then allow you to create uh, interventions, have those one-to-one -one conversations with the learners to, to help them get past any barriers or blockers. So the, the big why of why should you really, you know, why should you use FSQ? So um, some of the, the reasons are, are here. So we've got that providing authentic data to SLT for careers improvement. So you get that authentic learner voice, um, uh, depending on when you roll the, the questionnaires out. Um, if you've got, you know, year seven all the way through to 11, then you can really gauge that timeline of how that learner's individual knowledge and understanding of careers, of pathways, of the, the labor market that's out there, how their understanding of, of what that is and sort of where you can then provide support for that. The data that you get back from it is then that real tangible data that you can go to uh, SLT to have those tricky conversations if you need extra budget, extra resource, extra help in order to drive um, careers forward for, for all of your individual learners. 
through the answers that you get back from your learners, just now down here at this bottom right side, it allows us to identify learners that may be at risk of becoming neat. So again, based on the questions around maybe next steps, uh, those learners that have got a plan in place for, for post 11, post 16, if you've got information that suggests learners don't know what they are going to do, then this is that real um, tangible data that can help you uh, identify those learners that may be at risk of becoming neat unless you make a, an intervention and start to have those one-to-one uh, -one -one conversations with those learners. Like I just mentioned, based on the data that you get, if you have got gaps in provision, that these questions are, the, the, the answer from the questions are highlighting, then it allows you to create uh, tailored activities, to uh, tailored custom groups to really respond to the, the learners' answers. So almost here, you said we did. So the learners, uh, they complete the questionnaires and give you that true learner voice, authentic voice. And then as a result, you then react to that as a careers lead and start to make those interventions. <clears throat> Excuse me. With the new... Um, custom reporting function, we've got the ability now to be able to produce multiple reports where we before we had the sort of uh, the detailed report and the, the summary report and the send report, they weren't then sort of downloadable. So you couldn't export that data from uh, Compass Plus and then do something with it. So now this new reporting function, which is so powerful and so, uh, so important, that allows you now to really filter down onto any um, specific question, learners, et cetera, and then you can then produce data to go and support those conversations with, like we mentioned before, members of SLT, et cetera. And, and certainly all of this, all of the FSQ, it allows you to respond effectively to your learner voice. So really creating careers programs that are impactful, that are purposeful for your learners uh, so that they really get the best out of their careers provision whilst they are at your particular institution. So very much a you said we did approach, which I just mentioned earlier. So that is definitely the, the why and the, the value of uh, engaging with, with FSQ. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to jump into my demo account just to run you through um, what all of that sort of analysis and data um, reporting looks like. So for those that are new to Compass Plus, where we would find it is on your dashboard page here on the navigation bar down the left hand side. If we just click into learner and then questionnaire, it will take us to the page that houses all of the information that we need for, um, for the FSQ. So in this first section here, so we've got five different tabs uh, um, going from left to right. The first one is where you would generate and manage your links for your questionnaires. So we do run a full one hour deep dive webinar into FSQ. So we're not going to go through the generation of the, the links and things today, but just to let you know that if you did want to um, visit one of our previous webinars, you would find it in the help center in the, the webinar link, and you can go back through and look to see how you could generate uh, those links. And that is just for the, anybody that is new to using FSQ. So that is where we would do that. But what we're going to be interested in are these different uh, four different reporting functions. So if I just start with the summary report, and what Compass Plus gives us now is all of the data and information for my demo account. Again, this is all just demo dummy data for the purposes of these uh, training sessions. Uh, but you would see all of your live learner um, current data in front of you there. So if we just looked at this from uh, sort of left to, to right. So um, we've got the the uh, academic year that we're in. So we're in academic year 24-25. So we know that that's the correct data. Then we've got the, the two types of questions that are asked within each of the, the FSQs. So we've got the careers, knowledge and skills and the essential skills for life and work. And remember, those are mapped against the, the skills builder framework. We've then got the option to look at the uh, the data by question type uh, or question number. Sorry. So, and, you know, in uh, chronological order, we can go from um, or numerical order, sorry, from uh, question one all the way down and we can hover over them and see what those questions are. Or we've also got the option to do a filter and filter onto positive responses. So we'll do that in a moment. Now, what this data here tells us is if we just look at our start and secondary. So this um uh, bar here says that we've got 105 learners in our year seven have completed responses to our questionnaires. And that represents 96% of the generated link. So we're looking really good. We've almost got all of our year sevens to complete the questionnaires. So that's a really, really great start. Of the completed questionnaires, we've got an average re positive response of 35%. So 35% of our year, year seven learners are answering questions in a positive manner. Now, 
what I want to then do now is whilst this information and data is is nice to, to have, it's a little bit sort of higgledy piggledy and we're, we're not sure where, uh, where the good questions are and where the bad questions are. Um, what we can do is if we just filter onto this part here and click on positive responses, Compass Plus will then arrange all of the, the answers in positive response order. So we've got the most positive at the top to most negative at the bottom. So if we just sort of look at the, the top section first and spend a little bit of time thinking, right, this is where we are doing things well. So these are the, the wins that we're experiencing within uh, our year seven. And these are the things that we should be celebrating because not all of that, that doesn't always happen where when people when you're doing things right as a careers lead, it doesn't always get celebrated and sort of uh, mentioned. So we could look at these and think, right, these are the things that we need to continue doing for these particular areas. However, the, the I suppose the real area um, is where you need to develop and where you need to move on from and how looking at this data can potentially help with that. So we've got um, this question five here, which is, have you thought about how jobs and careers may change in the future? You've got 91% of your year sevens are saying, no, I've never thought about any jobs at all. Um, it's just not something that I've done. So that might prompt you to think, right, okay, within this next academic year for these year sevens, I need to start thinking about what I'm going to do to, to sort of rectify that, whether that is uh, inviting employees in, whether that's having careers fairs, that type of thing. I know some of those type of answers are quite generic, but they could fit for, for this question five here. One of the ones that I do like to look at, though, which links very heavily to yourselves, is this question six. So it says, at school, do you know who to go to for information and guidance about careers? So you've got 66% of your year sevens that, in effect, don't know who you are as a careers lead. So if they need advice, they, they don't know what to do. Now, it may be that you uh, wear more than one hat and you're not just a careers lead. You could be a geography teacher, head of maths. You could be um, a learner engagement, whatever it might be. The learners don't know you as the careers lead. So it could be that you maybe in um, the first week of, of term jump into assemblies, pop your head into um, tutor groups, form groups, etc. It may be that you even, uh, if you're brave enough, get your picture up on a, a notice board to let learners know that you're the careers lead and where they can find you. So what you then might find is that whilst this uh, set of year sevens, that is still a, a negative answer for your future year sevens, this question six, because of that little intervention, might be at the top of your list. So just moving on through some of the, the other uh, um, questionnaires within, within your particular set, if we looked at the GCSE one, for example, now where I mentioned about looking at data that may be able to identify learners that might be at risk of becoming neat, Within year 11, this is your, I suppose, for want of a better word, last chance saloon at gathering that data and information to then to be able to uh, do something with it. So really important that we roll this out um, in year 11. But then looking at the data, if we look at all of the question 15s, we've got 15C, which is, do you understand this option after year 11, which is T levels? We've got 15B is A levels and 15A is apprenticeships and 15D is BTEC. So all those kind of vocational type subjects um, that learners really need to have um, interactions with employees around so they understand that pathway. We've got our year 11s are saying, well, almost half of our year 11s are saying that they don't really understand anything about apprenticeships. They don't really understand anything about BTECs. Now, as it's our job to sort of really uh, inform our learners of all of those next steps, all of those available pathways, this could be quite key information. So you might then need to drill down into what who these learners are that uh, are representative in this data and then try to do something about it. So having the option to do it is really important. And FSQ, um, the results from that give you that sort of data. Now, where we can start to look at some of the specifics is in our detailed report and then also with our custom report. So if we clicked into detailed report, um, I'm going to look at 23, 24 because I've got more data in there for the academic year. <clears throat> and I'm also then I'm going to look at my GCC years and I'm going to look at year 11. So I'm looking at specific year groups now to see what the data can tell me. So the, the information is presented very similar to on that summary page. So I've got uh, 93 learners have submitted responses in my year 11 for that GCSE year. That's 87% of that year group. And I've got an average score of 70%. Now, where we can start to look at who these individuals are that we need to support 
is in these sections here. So on this left-hand side, on this bar chart, this gives us a breakdown of our 93 learners. We've got 74 learners are answering questions in a positive manner. We've got 13 learners are answering in a bit of a mix. They're answering um, some positive, some negative. But we've got six learners who are answering the majority of the questions in the questionnaire in a negative manner. Now, how we find out who those six are is if we just click on the bar chart, it will then give us a breakdown of who these particular learners are, which now allows us or you to go and have that conversation with that learner and see where the barriers and the blockers are. It may be that this is not this information is not a surprise to you that you know these learners have needed help and support throughout um, their their time at school, but it may also then um, just allow you the opportunity to examine this a little bit further. And certainly as we come towards that um, GCSE years, this is your last chance to make those interventions with those learners. So we could start to really ask those questions of those learners. Now, where we can look at things in even more detail again is on the right hand side. And we can start to look at particular characteristics of, of our learners within our setting. So what we can do, we can filter onto lots of different types of questions. So if I look at our low scoring questions, so these are my year 11's low scoring questions. I could then look at how my um, uh, boys and girls are answering the, the questions. I can look at pupil premium, SEM, that type of thing. And I can filter again on just all males or, or all females, etc. But for example, if I just wanted to look at my low scoring questions, so Compass Plus will give you the, uh, the sort of lowest five. If I hovered over them um, and then wanted to really start sort of drill down into who these learners are. So I've got lower scoring questions in year 11. Question 18 says, do you feel confident about talking um, about your skills in an interview? So this is a really, really important part for our learners that even if they're going on to apprenticeships, they still need to have interviews. So if we just click on that bar chart. Compass Plus will then give us a breakdown of how the learners have answered it. And so we really want to be focusing on the learners that are saying, you know what? No, I've got no confidence at all about talking about my skills in an interview. So if we just click on that chart there or that um, section there, it now again gives us another breakdown of who those particular learners are. Now, where in the past, all we could do was just take this information, take a screen grab of it and then <clears throat> go away and start to have conversations with the learn with these learners within the new reporting function here, which I'll go on to in a second. It allows us to to export this data and then start to do something with it. So on this side here, we can look at lots of different characteristics. And again, what you filter on um, and, and analyze will completely depend on maybe your strategic priorities and the, the things that you want to uh, aim to achieve within your particular institutions. But it totally depends on how you want to look at. You don't have to look at the lower scoring questions, but you could look at um, the um, the split on how your boys and your girls answer within sort of year 11 and see if there's any gender disparities there. Just to move back up here, the, the send report, just to kind of highlight that this looks exactly the same as the detailed report and that information is presented in exactly the same way. The only difference being is that it's now on key stages where before in the detailed report, you had it on your different sort of key stages and transition points within the send report. It's all just on um, on key stages. And that is because the, the future skills questionnaire for uh, send learners remains the same throughout all ages. So just to move on to the custom reporting. Um, and in fact, if I just go into this data report again, so if we just make note of I'm just going to go on the low scoring questions. I'm going to go on to 18 and then these learners here. So just to make note of Sabrina Adams and Lily Adams, for example, if I went into my custom reporting function, Compass Plus will now give me the option to export data. So if I want to export that data from question 18 of my GCSE year group, um, I just want to make sure it, yeah, so it's in the 23, 24. So if I select my questionnaire type first, which was the GCSE years, I then select my academic year. I was filtering on 23, 24 because I've got more data in there. What Compass Plus now does is it's starting to filter down into all of the information that is available for my GCC years learners that have completed the questionnaire in 23, 24. Now, I've got the option to now select any question that I want in order to sort of um, analyze the data and, uh, that Compass Plus will, will give me from the, the questions that the learners have answered. Now, I was focusing on question 18, which is about interview skills. So we can see here, do you feel comfortable talking about your interview, your skills in an interview? So if I select that, 
what Compass Plus will do is if I just scroll along the bottom here and I need to uh, just filter into that there. So if I have got question 18 here, there are four possible responses. And if I want the no, not yet, which is what I really want to focus on. So these are the learners in my GCC year group for 23, 24 that are saying they have got no confidence at all about talking about their skills in an interview. So what we can see here is I've applied that filter on question 18. If I just click download report, Compass Plus will give me um, a an overview of what I've just filtered on. So I've got my GCSE years questionnaire. I've got it in the academic year 23, 24. I've selected one column, which is question 18, and then I've applied the filter to that column. Now, if I just click download report, oh, I'm just going to move that over there. What Compass Plus will then do is it will download that data and information into a spreadsheet for me. And it will then allow me to analyze who these learners are that are seeing they don't know how to um, uh, talk about their skills within an interview. Now I can then apply filters to this. I could then um, look at different form groups and start to really put on some um, impactful interventions. So whether I put on some um, interview skill sessions for, for these particular learners, but having that data and information in front of me can really allow me to, to see who needs my help um, the, the most in order to, um, stop them or prevent them from becoming neat at the end of year 11. So again, depending on what your um, what your purpose is and what data you want to analyze, you can select on any particular questionnaire, you can select on any uh, particular um, academic year, and then you've got the option to select and filter on um, multiple or individual questions to gather that data and information to then be able to analyze it here in this uh, section at the bottom and then apply any filters um, that you want to. Now, normally you may well um, apply the filter on no, not yet, because certainly with the GCSE years, these are the learners that are expressing they've got very little or no knowledge in the particular um, questions that they're being asked, but it just allows you to then download reports and apply those, um, those filters to really dig deep into to those learners and, and providing that support for them. So those are the different sections for how you would um, carry out your analysis and reporting of your FSQ answers. Now, just to jump back into the, the slide deck here. Yeah. So this is more just a, a sort of a, a reminder uh, of what we've just gone through there. So we've got the, the custom reporting section. This allows you, like I've just said there, to apply filters to particular questionnaires, academic years, etc. And we do it through this custom reporting function here, select your questionnaire and your um, and your academic year. This is really, really powerful in, <clears throat> in helping you start to make those interventions, ask those questions, create those activities, custom groups that are going to then really help you uh, create and provide a, a, a meaningful and impactful um, careers plan for your learners. We've got how you can then download the report, exactly how I've just done it there. So this has got a little filter applied. They're looking at the no, not yet. This one was the, have you got a plan for your next step after year 11? So again, really helping you identify those learners that might be at risk of becoming neat and doing something about it at that year 11 stage. Okay, so just to kind of go through our resources and training now, like I mentioned at the start, if I just work from the bottom up, because I'll finish in the Help Center articles, so with FSQ and careers and all things Compass Plus, if you are having any problems at all, integrating it into uh, using Compass Plus effectively within your particular setting, then please reach out to your ECs and your hub support. They are there for you to, to use. They've got a, um, a, a large amount of experience and knowledge in using the system, but not only that, that they have large networks that they can then also put you in touch with that may just be able to help you um, move past certain areas that you may be experiencing difficulties in. We've got the self-paced le online learning there. So again, I'm going to touch on this in a couple of slides as well, but I've certainly further uh, more training available. But self-paced learning is, is embedded into Compass Plus and you can work at that at your own pace. And there are uh, different modules in there that just help you build your confidence and competence in using Compass Plus. Like it says, that's completely free. We've got our webinars. So like uh, we've got the, the Bite Size one today. We also run deep dive webinars into all of the different areas of Compass Plus and they're available within the Help Center as well. And then we've got our Help Center articles. So if I just jump back into my demo, if I just click down here on the left-hand side in the navigation bar into Help Center, 
what this will then do is it takes me to where all the the resources and the articles are that are there to help you so the the online training the the self um uh, the online portal sorry yeah the, the self-paced learning is in this section here the webinars are down in this section here any resources that you may need to help drive your careers uh, activities plans events forward are over here lots of hyperlinks as to how you can get past certain areas um, that you may be experiencing difficulty in within Compass Plus, they're all here as well. And then if you are still experiencing any difficulties, we've got the, the support function down here. Now, this tends to take you through to Tamad and the team, um, who's obviously been on the, the, the session today. Okay, so just bringing things to a close with the sort of final um, careers leader training that's available for you. So in order to help you be the best that you can be within your particular role, appreciating that... Um, you may wear you may wear multiple hats, and that landscape of careers leader changes so very often. There, are, there is uh, some fully funded online training. It's been provided by some of these um, training providers here at the bottom, and all you need to do is just to access the QR code there, log on, and then sign up for for any of the um, training that you will hopefully benefit from. That will again allow you to just be um, the the best careers leader you can possibly be. We've also got a, a wider training offer, again, accessed through the, the QR code there. And this is on our hub, on our portal. And it, again, you, you go on there and you create uh, an account and then you can work through all of these different elements of uh, online training. So, for example, if you wanted to do the Future Skills Questionnaire Part 1, Mastering the Essentials, it would very much go through what we've done today. But again, giving you that step-by-step -step guidance on how you can, how you can, uh, uh, roll out and then anal analyze that FSQ data and information. And finally, the uh, the what's coming soon slide. So the, the careers impact system, the internal leadership review is now live within the Compass Plus accounts and it is there for you to, to access. So there's a link on there for you to be able to uh, get as much uh, information, advice and guidance on that as possible. So this is something that we should all be aiming towards uh, completing. And the bottom one there is our Compass Plus updates and development. So again, a really helpful link that takes you through to um, the, the help center and just something to keep an eye on really, because there are lots of development, lots of um, new uh, updates that are coming soon to, to Compass Plus and you can get access to them there. Okay, so just to bring things to a close, if I can get anybody that is still on the, the session today to access the QR code there and leave um, any feedback that you feel uh, is applicable. So we really do value the feedback that we get from yourselves, especially um, when it is either A, helping us to create uh, more meaningful content. So if there's anything that you feel hasn't been included today that you would like to have been and then please leave that um equally if uh if the sessions hit the mark and certainly in the, the last 30 minutes it's got through everything that you needed to help you be to be able to analyze that data and information then please leave that as well it's always nice to know if we are uh, doing things correct because then we can continue to do that but equally if there's other things that you would like us to include to leave that feedback there as well so Really, that just leaves me to say, Tamid, is there is there anything else outstanding? Any questions? Hey, Pete, no, nothing outstanding over here. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your support today, Tamid. Always appreciated. And, and thank you, everybody, for, for joining us this afternoon. Hopefully you found that useful and beneficial. And the sort of the, the call to action now will be to start looking at that data information from your uh, future skills questionnaire results and to start analysing that to be able to really make those interventions that can improve the quality of your careers plans. So thank you very much for joining us and hopefully see you all again soon. Thanks now. Bye.